One of the very many dangerous weapons that the Watchtower uses is control over you and your family. It doesn't matter if your family are one of Jehovah's Witnesses or not, the Watchtower is going to tell current Jehovah's Witnesses how to treat their family whether they are or are not Jehovah's Witnesses. I wanted to show you the progression, how it happens, how slowly but surely you are bound to lose your family to this organization. Now I know for some that might be watching this, if you're Jehovah's Witnesses, you might be thinking, well that's crazy. How could an organization that says they support and love and unite families be working against families? That just doesn't seem right. Well, let me take you down a road of how the Watchtower does it, and then you can just come to your own conclusion. See if this behavior logically, think logically, is this normal behavior of how to treat someone if they want to come to an organization? If this person wants to know who God is, is this the right way to do it? Well, just notice as we kind of take the first part of this, one of Jehovah's Witnesses are surely bound to call you or write you or maybe come to your door. Their goal is to start a Bible study. It may look a little bit something like this. In the Watchtower's mindset, a Bible study, someone who's coming out of the world, well, they must look like this. Yeah, you wouldn't do that. Yeah, I'm sure she wouldn't do that. In fact, to be completely honest with you, my experience as one of Jehovah's Witnesses for 25 years is that that's actually a pretty good picture what the Bible study had in her mind of some of the places that I've been to that were supposed to be Jehovah's Witnesses and it turned out to be a drinking party. Maybe it's just me, but I'm sure only worldly people do that. Oh, and by the way, this girl also probably smokes a little bit of weed. But taking something when I'm feeling a little stressed, like maybe, I don't know, a little weed? Ah, yes, I just love how the Watchtower sets up everybody, by the way. If you're not one of Jehovah's Witnesses, you are a... You've got purple in your hair, as they're painting this girl out to be. She's got purple in her hair. She goes to drinking parties. She's smoking weed. This is a good time to invite her to the meetings. Oh, wait. It's always a good time to push those meetings. You're really pushing those meetings, aren't you? <laughs> yes, push those meetings. In fact, it's not just going to the meetings that you're expected to do. It's at this point that they will expect you to be a progressive Bible student. That means... Well, maybe commenting. Okay, it seems like our friend is doing pretty good here. She's not partying. Uh, she's progressively taking the purple out of her hair. She's not smoking weed. She's going to the meetings and commenting, and you guessed it. You know what's next. A good Jehovah Witness wouldn't be a good Jehovah's Witness unless you did what? You went door to door and spread the good news about how someone else can stop partying, come to the meetings, and become just like one of them. Being free of it to serve Jehovah felt amazing. Ah, yes. I love how the Watchtower paints that when you go door to door the first time, it's going to feel amazing. It's going to be euphoric. It's going to be everything you've ever wanted in life. Well, I pioneered for 
oh, 16 to 17 years of my life. When pioneering first started, it was 1,000 hours a year, and I never once, not once, had that kind of emotional response to going door to door to tell people the good news of the kingdom. The way the Watchtower paints this is they want you to think this is going to be the best experience of your life. Look, everybody else is having the best experience of their life. Why aren't you? And so if you don't feel like you're having the best experience of your life, there must be something wrong with you. Because the Watchtower tells you that everybody loves it and just enjoys it. Well, anybody who watches any of my car crashes, do they seem like they love it and enjoy it? Or does it seem like a job, busy on their cell phones, not wanting to answer questions, and just to take you to JW. Boring. Okay, well, now that she's an unbaptized publisher, you guessed it. Guess what's next? It is to sign your life away. Watch what happens. Now, you might be thinking, how's that a bad thing? How is the not partying, not smoking weed, going and doing something and just, you know, talking to people about the Bible and then getting baptized, how would that be a bad thing? Notice that once you're baptized, you no longer have the ability to say no to this organization. They say and you do. The issue of holidays are coming up here with our friend who just got baptized and she's about to see how this issue can bring heartbreak to the family because the organization has told her she can't celebrate the holidays. If she does, she gets disfellowshipped and loses all of her new friends. So there's many rules the Watchtower has that you are not allowed to break. It's not just holidays. You, if you're an ex-Jehovah Witness, could think of many things that the Watchtower would not let you do. And so as we look into this little scene here of how things change, it was slow, but surely notice how the Watchtower is stealing her family. But mom, listen. No, Jade, you listen. Isn't this just another of your phases? It's time to move on, love. The holidays are our time. It's all I get from you. Promise me you'll be here. <laughs> Promise. Did you catch what the mother said? The mother said, the holidays are coming and this is the only time I get from you. Why would it be that the only time the mother would be able to spend with her daughter who's newly baptized and busy going door to door, why would this be the only time that she gets from her? Because the watchtower dictates every moment of your waking hour. You wake up and you examine the scriptures daily. Then you might go to a meeting for field service. Then you go door to door. And then it's really best because of 1 Corinthians 15, 33, do not be misled. Bad association spoils useful habits. Guess who is a bad association? Anyone who is not one of Jehovah's Witnesses because they're not going to lift you up spiritually the way your brothers and sisters would inside the organization. And so they dictate how much time you spend with other people, including your family. This is is one of the many destructive control mechanisms that the Watchtower uses to pull you away from your family and to just get you to serve them only. They say Jehovah, you're serving Jehovah, but when you research and just dig even just a little bit, anyone can see you're not serving God. You're serving Jehovah's organization. Just say it all the way. Don't say you're serving Jehovah. Say it the way it is. You're serving Jehovah's organization. 
We make videos like this, Laura and I, not because we hate Jehovah's Witnesses, but I would hope you would see through some of the tongue-in-cheek humor. I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So there's certain things when it comes to the culture of them that I'm just going to laugh about. Coffee breaks, goody night, yada, yada, yada. Some of that stuff is just funny to me because I lived it, and so did you. So those things to me, or those things to me, are funny. But when it comes to the blood doctrine, the two-witness rule, this I can't see my family on a regular basis, if I do something that the Watchtower says that I'm not supposed to do in an elder's book that I was never allowed to look at, there's rules in there of things that you don't know about. And if you break those rules, then you'll be disfellowshipped. So it's the control that they have over your life. And that's what Laura and I want you to be set free from. Research the Watchtower. See how they surely, they slowly, but surely steal your family in one way or another. If you are a Jehovah's Witness and your whole family is a Jehovah's Witness, then you know once you're baptized, you've signed your death warrant, if you will. Because as long as they remain Jehovah's Witnesses, and if you wake up to the fact that you've been lied to by eight men in Warwick, New York, you will lose your family. You're not allowed, or they're not allowed, to speak to you anymore. Because you're now a filthy apostate. You've left Jehovah's organization. So even if you are a Jehovah's Witness and you have all of your family, you, you are at risk of losing your family at any moment that you find out what the truth is. If you're a Jehovah's Witness and your family's not, you're at risk. Why? Because they will tell you and dictate how you spend time with even your own family. All right, that's all I've got. I hope this video helped. Thank you so much for watching. God bless everybody and have a fantastic day.